All right, welcome to the channel. By popular demand, we are back with High Fleet Behemoth. This game hasn't really been updated for 10th edition because it was already mint. We're gonna break it down into two stages, the first of which to get your models on the table and playing some games, and the second to elevate it beyond Tabletop Plus. All of the paints you'll need will be listed below in the description, so let's get into it. All right, y'all asked for it, so here it is. We're gonna kick it off with some corn red. We're gonna thin this down to a wash consistency and we're just gonna apply this all over the skin. We're starting from a gray primer here. You could use white and the red might be a wee bit more intense, but gray or white will do. Just apply this all over the skin, ensure that you get good consistency and good coverage. I've applied two layers here and I feel like the color is nice and saturated. We're then gonna come in with some Mephiston Red and start picking out the highlights and the details within the skin. So we're looking to accentuate the volumes and edge highlights throughout the body. So you can see we're grabbing the shoulders, biceps, triceps, forearms, thigh, calves, all of those important places, leaving the corn red in the deepest recesses. Whenever it comes to the tail, you want to pick out that strong edge highlight that runs the whole way down and then pull all of your pigment towards the end of the tail. That's where you want the brightest color to be and most of the color to deposit. Then you just want to grab some of those details underneath the tail, leaving some of the corn red in those recesses. Whenever it comes to the head, we just want to ensure that we get that nice bulbous bit at the back and then pick out all of those strong features throughout the face. So there's a lot of details in the face, so use this as an opportunity to pick those out. Once you've finished with the Mephiston Red, you should have something that looks like this. We're going to take some Evil Sun Scarlet now and repeat the process, just trying to cover slightly less area with our highlights. So we're being a wee bit more precise here. Uh, spend a wee bit more time just focusing in on the details on the edges and looking to add some more contrast to these areas. So I'm basically highlighting the same places, shoulders, biceps, triceps, forearms, top of the thigh, ensuring that I grab those edge highlights around the vented areas. Just trying to cover slightly less area and pay attention to some of the more pronounced details. Again, on the tail, I'm pulling all of that pigment towards the end of the tail cleaning my brush and then feathering that out a wee bit just to help soften that transition. Again, focusing on that nice strong edge highlight that runs the whole way down the tail. And then same again on the face. We wanna to highlight towards the back of that like bulbous area and then pick out all of those raised details in the face. And then after you've finished with your Evil Sun Scarlet, you should have something that looks a bit like this. We're then going to come in with some Abaddon Black and we're just going to apply this all over the carapace, the claws, the hooves, um, the carapace on the gun. Pretty much anywhere that we've not painted red is where we want to put down the Abaddon Black. This is just going to act as the foundation for the next colour. It helps to desaturate the base and makes, uh, creates more contrast between our super saturated reds and what we're going to be doing with the rest of the carapace. So generally you don't need one pass of Abaddon Black over the carapace. If you find the yours is a wee bit thin, just come in with a second coat. We're going to take some Sotec Green, mix that with our Abaddon Black and you end up with this very like desaturated um, kind of blue green colour. Um, we're going to apply this all over the carapace, the hooves, the claws, all those places that we just painted black. Ensure that you get a nice even and consistent coat over this. So generally you can get away with just one coat of this, but if you do need a second, go back in and just apply another coat over the top. We're then gonna grab some Bugman's Glow and we're gonna apply that over some of the fleshy areas. So the connecting tubes between the gun and the arm and then over the tongue. So take your time whenever you're painting the back of these connection tubes, because they can be quite tricky to get to. If you need to use a smaller brush, by all means, do that. I've been using a size two Artis Opus Series S the whole way through this because it has a nice big belly and allows me to cover a lot of area quickly. Once you've finished step one or stage one, you should have something that looks like this and this is 100% ready for the tabletop. If you've enjoyed the process so far, don't forget to hit that like and subscribe. So now it's time to elevate it to tabletop plus. We're coming in with Sotec Green once again and we're going to start to introduce some texture and detail to the carapace. So I'm using the tip of my brush to draw lines over the carapace, picking out the edges 
and then just repeating this all over the rest of the carapace so you can see grabbing that edge highlight and then drawing small lines. So whenever I'm doing the lines, I'm applying the tip of my brush and always pulling it towards the edge of the carapace. As you get closer to the edge, the brush tip will widen a wee bit and your line will become slightly thicker. So while you're working around the carapace, just be sure to pick out those additional details around those spiny bits at the top and then just continue to draw lines, grab edge highlights and work through the rest of the carapace. So we want the front of the shoulder to be a wee bit darker than the rest of the carapace. This just helps to create some contrast between the back of the head and the shoulder. So you can already see how the addition of these striations and the detail into the carapace really brings that behemoth scheme to life. So when it comes to doing the head, make sure to pick out that strong edge highlight down the center of the head and then around each of the plates. This just helps to create some definition, structure and separation between the skin and the carapace. We're then going to grab some Fenrisian Grey and we're going to create a 50-50 mix of our Sotec Green and Fenrisian Grey. We're going to repeat the last process or the last step where we created this striation pattern throughout the carapace. This time we want to cover slightly less area so start your lines slightly further down or closer to the edge of the carapace and then again pull them towards the edge. For any of your like center lines or strong edge highlights around the carapace, just try to cover slightly less area, make them slightly thinner, again adding more detail and definition to this pattern. So hopefully you can see it's the same kind of idea where we're applying the tip of the brush and pulling towards the edge. This time we're just trying to cover slightly less area, leaving some of the Sotec green visible from the last step. Don't worry if all your lines aren't straight or they're a bit wonky or, you know, something's gone awry. Adding that bit of individuality to each gaunt gives them a more organic and natural feel. So once you've finished with your carapace highlights with the 50-50 mix, you should have something that looks like this. I think this is already looking absolutely banging. I think the behemoth scheme is super strong with these warm and cool tones. Lastly, to finish the carapace, we're going to come in with pure Fenrisian Grey and we're just going to pick out a couple of additional highlights in places, going for the sharpest point in each of the carapace plates, so really focusing on those edge highlights. And then just adding in a couple of additional lines where you might have like a slightly larger or thicker line or there's maybe like a, a slash or a crack or some kind of detail within the carapace. Just pick that out with the Fenrisian Grey. Again, it doesn't have to be perfect. That variety just helps add to the character of the nid. Around the shoulders, because we have a lot of those striations and a lot of those lines and texture, I'm just adding in a couple of additional highlights in this area. Just helps add a wee bit more focus and structure to the carapace. So you can see we're only adding a couple of highlights with the Fenrisian Grey, keeping it quite light, very light touch with this color, because uh, you don't need a whole lot of it. Once you've finished all the carapace steps, you should have something that looks a bit like this. And I will say this looks pretty top notch, digging this scheme. We're then gonna come in with some Yashabdi bone here and we're gonna create some uh, highlights within our claws, uh, the carapace on the gun and the hooves. So I'm just mixed this in with some Abaddon black and I'm just repeating essentially the same sort of technique that we did on the carapace, on the hooves and on the claws. We're creating lines, striations, texture, additional information within these areas. And whenever you create these lines and this texture and stuff, you don't need to worry about your transitions being as smooth because you're creating this distortion and noise within the space. It helps to smooth out those areas for you. So you don't need to worry too much about like big jumps in value. Then add a bit more of the Shabti bone into the Abaddon Black and just repeat the process. When it comes to the sharper claws, try to direct your highlights towards the tip of the claw, just to make them look more sharp and aggressive. With the hooves and the carapace on the gun, again, create that uh, striation, those lines throughout those surfaces. Just add in that bit of extra detail. So when it comes to the gun, you want to focus your highlights towards the barrel or the muzzle of the gun, if that's the right word. So I'm pulling my lines towards the front and then edge highlighting at the back of that carapace piece. 
and then at the back of the gun we want to pull our highlights towards the butt of the gun and edge highlight the rest of the carapace. This just helps to create a wee bit more structure, a wee bit more shape to the gun. Then taking some pure shabty bone we're going to use this to accentuate those claws or those sharper edges within each of, of these sections. So just adding in a small highlight in those areas. So on the gun, again, focus on that strong edge highlight that runs down the center of the carapace panel and then pull some highlights towards the brightest point of each, uh, each of the carapace panels. Taking some pure shabty bone, we're gonna use that to highlight up the teeth. When it comes to doing the teeth, just make sure you separate out the two at the front or else you'll look like he's got one giant tooth. But one or two coats of your shabty bone should be fine in this area. We then thin down our Abaddon Black to a glaze consistency and I'm pulling that towards the center of the gun where that eye nodule postural thing is. So just pull all of the pigment towards the center of the gun. So I'm using uh, quite a thin layer here. I've wiped off the excess paint and moisture on a paper towel before applying it to the model. Apply a second coat of this once everything's dry and you'll have that nice dark center to the gun, creating a bit more structure and shape in this area. It also helps to create a stronger focal point around the face because you have this darker area underneath. So you're playing about with that idea of uh, light and dark contrast. Once you've finished with your glazing, grab some Bugman's Glow and some Corn Red and create a 50-50 mix with those and start to highlight up the, the magazine of the gun, the barrel of the gun, and then that connection point at the butt of the gun. Grab those iron sights, so those sights at the top of the gun as well, just to help create a wee bit more detail. Mixing some more Bugman's Glow into our previous mix, we just repeat the highlighting process, covering a slightly smaller area. And finally, with some pure Bugman's Glow, Really go for the brightest highlights here, covering less space once again, drawing out some edge highlights and creating some more distinction within this area. So to paint the connector cables and the tongue, we're gonna to start off with a wash of corn red over our Bugman's Glow. So I've just thinned this down, very similar to how we did at the very start of the video whenever we were painting the skin. Then I'm going to take some Drakenhof Nightshade and apply this towards the inside of the mouth just to darken down the tongue in that area and then towards the connection points on these tubes. Just helps to give that sort of like bruised look. And then to highlight these areas I'm taking some Bugman's Glow, drawing my highlight towards the tip of the tongue and then creating some highlights in those connectors. Just grabbing the edge highlights and creating some more structure and definition in those places kind of targeting my highlights towards the center of those connection tubes away from the Drakenhof nightshade that we just applied just to keep that sort of bruising uh, discoloration in place. Now mixing some Yashabdi Bone into our Bugman's Glow and just repeating that highlighting process covering slightly less area and again directing all of that pigment towards the tip of the tongue as we want that to be the brightest area. With the connectors again, just grab those nodule bits at the top and then start to focus our highlights more towards the center of that tube. Just sort of creating that gradient from outside in. Then we're taking some pure shabti bone and just repeating the highlighting process, really focusing on the tip of the tongue this time. This is likely as bright as we'll need to take it, but you've got that nice sort of discoloration as you head into the mouth. Now grab a bit more of the shabti bone and apply this over the eye and that nodule eye part in the gun as well. I've seen a few people do this and I've seen it done in some of the Games Workshop ones. We're just gonna draw in, a, I guess, a slit eye um, on this as well. So just grab some Abaddon Black and just draw a straight line down the center of that eye. Then grabbing a bit of Cassandra Yellow, we're gonna apply this over the, the eye in the gun and the eyes in the head. So apply one, two or three coats of this just to build up the saturation. Depends on how bright you want it. Grab some more Yashabti Bone and we're just going to dot in a couple of highlights towards the back of each eye. You notice I'm using a smaller brush here so I've got the Artis Opus size zero here uh, just to hit these smaller areas because it can be quite tricky to catch. Then we're going to elevate the skin one more time. I thought Let's push it one step further. I wouldn't necessarily do this on the smaller nids, but this is definitely something you could do on your larger nids. So I've mixed in some Cadian Flesh Tone to my Evil Sun Scarlet, and I'm starting to highlight up some parts of the skin. 
just the more prominent areas like the edges of muscles and some sharper highlights around parts of the skin. So where you have the joints or the extended parts of the carapace like the elbows um, around the claws, things like that. So continue to work around the model, really bring attention to those vents and uh, bits of detail within the skin, the top or the main belly of each muscle, uh, some of the connecting parts within the skin or the carapace, just wherever you think would benefit from an additional highlight. Obviously we gotta do along the tail, so definitely grab that strong edge that runs down the side of the tail, and then once again, we're gonna apply some towards the tip and then filter that out with a damp brush. Just creates a nice soft transition throughout the tail, helps bring me a bit of focus in there. Obviously, we're going to bring in some more highlights on the face because we want to draw a lot of our focus and attention up into this area. Really get uh, in and around the mouth, focus on those strong details within the jaw and the cheekbones. Now, one of the cool things that they added to this scheme was this kind of almost like translucent look to the back of the head. So to build up that translucent look, we're going to add more of the Kidian flesh tone into the Evil Sun Scarlet and start to create a transition towards the back of the dome. So just build that up nice and gradual. Keep your paint thin using semi-transparent or translucent layers. So build this up in a nice gradual manner, adding more Kidian flesh tone into the mix as you progress with your highlight towards the back of the head. Then come in with some pure Kidian flesh tone over that area. Again, trying to soften the transition through into the back of the head. Build this up over one or two passes until you're happy with the overall coverage. Now this is the fun part, this is where we get to do a bit of freehand where we introduce this like blood vessel kind of look and this is how we start to really build up that translucent look in the back of the head. So the easiest way that I can explain how to do the freehand is it's kind of like how you used to draw tree branches back whenever you were a kid. So essentially you create this main trunk structure um, and then you start to branch off and create smaller lines off that main structure. So we start at the back of the head and create our main line and then we start to create smaller lines off the, the side of that or start to thin them out as they progress forward. This kind of creates that veiny structure. So you can thicken up the main line and then draw in some smaller lines. Make these as random as you want, add in as many of them as you like. I think having one or two really distinct uh, heavy lines is quite nice and then having a number of smaller lines coming off that really does help to create that vein like look. In order to soften out our transitions and uh, create some harmony between this Kidian flesh tone and the rest of the skin, we've thinned down our Evil Sun Scarlet and we're applying this over as a glaze. So I'm glazing from the brightest points towards the darkest points, pulling my pigment in towards the main red of the head. I'm applying this over multiple coats so you can see how it starts to soften and transition towards the inside of the head, leaving that kind of exposed translucent brain at the back. So once you're all said and done, your nid should look something like this. Let's get him on the spinning thing and let's get him for the close up. I think this is a fantastic scheme. I'm really, really happy with this rendition of High Fleet Behemoth. So I think that super cold blue carapace just complements that super warm, saturated red skin so well. The extra details in the carapace, those striations just help to make it look more aggressive and more intimidating. That translucent look to the back of the head is just a super sweet addition on top. I cannot wait to see your rendition of High Fleet Behemoth. Hopefully you found that useful. If you have any comments, questions or suggestions for future videos, please drop them below in the comments. And if you want to take your painting to the next level, I have a Patreon that's focused around feedback and coaching. You also get access to exclusive guides and content. If you want to show me what you've been working on or what you've been using these videos for, please head over to the Discord and drop some pics into the whips or the completed projects. I would love to see what you've been doing. Just want to say thank you again for watching and I'll catch you at the next one. All links can be found below in the description and don't forget to like and subscribe.